Hey y'all, Rayshawn here, welcome to In The Wild. And today we have a special location of an episode for you because we are at Fat Man's Cafe and we're going to talk to some very fun folks. So first up we have Brad and Havard Usri of the Fat Man's Hospitality Group. They are the owner and operators and it's a family business and Brad is actually an alum. So we're gonna to talk to him a little bit about their experience and we have something, I guess, a little bit more fun for you because today we're talking about our JAG Perks program. And for those who are unfamiliar, it is for those who are part of the JAG Nation community. So if you're a student or an employee that have an active JAG card, you can use that to get discounts. And this is one of the places. So we're gonna talk to them a little bit about that and a special dish that they have uh, made just for us. And coming up second, we have Sarah, who is from Destination Augusta, and she's going to get us a little bit more out and experience Augusta in uh, a couple of different ways that are also very fun. So whether you are an Augusta newbie or you've been here for a while, stay tuned because we got a bunch in store to get you out in the wild in Augusta. Thanks y'all for having me here today. Brad, have, uh, just getting started, could you tell us a little bit about Fat Man's Hospitality Group and how it came to be? Well, uh, it's a family owned business, been in business over 70 years. Uh, it started with a little corner grocery store and it's morphed into food service now, but we've gone through retail and uh, other gyrations of this business. But the, the, the common denominator is they all have the moniker Fat Man's. Since uh, we've, we've grown our, our, our brand uh, to other restaurants, and I'll, I'll let Havard pick up on the, the restaurant brands that we have our name on. Yeah, so we, uh, we moved the original uh, Fat Man's Cafe, which was on Laney Walker Boulevard, and uh, to Dad's point, we've gone 60-plus uh, years with, without the doors being closed, even though we've made every day of business we've been here open to Augusta. Um, and we moved here uh, about 11 years ago, I believe, and we've been open since. And since then, we've also expanded into the event space next door. We have a very large catering side of the business. We're at AU a lot, which we love. Um, then we went and opened the Southern Salad, which is down on Broad Street. Uh, it is a healthy, quick service restaurant. And then, uh, we also acquired Snowcap Drive-In in 2019, which is in downtown North Augusta. Very nostalgic place. We've tried to bring it back to life. Burgers, hot dogs, shakes, very family-friendly place. And we are currently in the process of renovating uh, another building on Broad Street to open Bradley's Barbecue, hopefully in the fall of this year, but we're not putting ourselves to any hard timeline yet. So with business, there always comes, you know, pros and cons of weighing like you know the risks so how do you kind of figure out when's the right time to add on because like you mentioned like you've been kind of consistent with adding on new businesses under your belt take that one i'll add to it well i tell you i don't know if there's ever a right time uh, I, I think you have to get passionate about whatever you're trying to do whether it's growing a new brand or expanding what you have and you know once that passion grows to a point where it's, it's, it's burning inside of you and you it's almost like you got to do it um, that's when you pull the trigger and uh, and you have to have a good plan which I, I think we do and what we've had in the past and the, the good thing about what we're doing with the uh, Bradley's barbecue is we're taking a historic building uh, which is right up our alley and again I, I would let have her pick up on that because that's kind of his expertise on you know taking a, an old brand and then putting our own uh, stamp on it yeah I think we uh all of our projects have had kind of a common denominator. You know, us being in a historic space here, our brand already being somewhat nostalgic in the city of Augusta. Uh, Southern Salad was a more of a Ford concept, but still a very old building that we did extensive renovations to. Snowcap, the same thing, very nostalgic brand and an old building. We got to kind of marry those two things. And then with uh, the old Sunshine Bakery, which we were turning into Bradley's Barbecue, same thing. You know, people have an idea of what Sunshine Bakery was, what that building looked like. And, you know, it's our responsibility, our privilege, our honor to go in there and, and bring it back to life, but also put one of our concepts in there. And we, we do barbecue well. Uh, we're confident in that. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing a brick and mortar downtown to Augusta and show, show the public that. 
I'm excited you know, for what's, it. What's interesting is when you, know, you go full cycle in life, the original restaurant was called The Pit. Okay. And so it was because it had a barbecue pit. And so now we've taken the original restaurant, The Pit, and now we're opening a full-fledged barbecue restaurant, which is it was kind of cool that that, that kind of brings back the, the origins of Fat Man's. And also, his, his first name's Bradley. <laughs> my first name's Bradley. I'm the okay. second. And then my, my daughter's name is Bradley. So oh, wow. in turn, full circle as well, we came up with the name of Bradley's Barbecue. That's, the, that's even more exciting. <laughs> three, three generations already. Yeah. We hadn't even opened the doors yet. <laughs> uh, and Brad, you're an alum of Augusta College. Uh, what are some of your favorite memories when you think about your time as a student there? Well, a proud alumni of, uh -huh. of, of Augusta College. Uh, I would call it Augusta University now. But, uh, you know, I, I wish I'd have spent more time in the classroom. I, I've, <laughs> I've enjoyed the basketball court a little too much, and uh, that was my, uh, my mission at that time. And so I, I wish somebody would slap me and let me get in the classroom a little better. But, you know, just, you know, just being up there on the hill, what they call the Somerville campus now, um, yeah, we, we were just like a little family, and um, my biggest uh, memory, though, is that's where I met my wife. I've uh, been married 42 years. Um, Better get that and, number uh, right. That's right, <laughs> exactly. And, uh, but anyway, so that's obviously what is my real memory of, of Augusta College, is, is meeting her outside that little bitty gym and um, starting a romance is still going. <laughs> that's awesome. And you guys or Fat Man's Hospitality uh, Group has been big supporters of the university throughout the years. What would you say has been the most rewarding part of, I guess, supporting the university and kind of seeing what it is become today? I'll take that as well. Well, it, you know, it's, it's amazing the growth we've seen, especially in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, and again, we, we have been a, a big part of AU in, in all aspects of our business. And again, it's, it's a big, charity for us but it's not just a charity we know we're giving back to some of this growing augusta uh, and now you know the, this business our family we started a scholarship the usri uh, scholarship which which marries the whole school of business in, a, in an athlete uh, and offers them a scholarship uh, and, and we're proud it's the usri scholarship and so this business allowed us to have the resources to produce that and um and it's a real privilege to be the sponsor of that scholarship too. So we, lots of great members in the school. Yeah, I think the, you know, we also focus our energy on um, where we do like to give back because there's a lot of opportunities in independently small business. You're, you know, folks always kind of want to see if you can donate here or, or do do what there. And we try to focus our energies with AU. Another one of those is a. Uh, at the Georgia Cancer Center is a pace line, which is something I take pride in having a team with every year to do the bike ride and raise money, um, and along with the scholarship and some other calls at the school. And, and again, what he, to piggyback off what he said, the growth that the university has had both downtown and in the Somerville campus over the last 10 years, and you know, we, we we've seen that on the business side as well, which is which is really cool and um, looking forward to the next 10 years and seeing the growth that the school has. Yeah, and definitely I feel like your impact has been huge for the university. Uh, but switching ge gears a little bit, have you, in addition to being VP for operations, you are a chef. Uh, do you have any memorable moments from culinary school? Oh, man. Um, yeah, so I went to, I was at Clemson University. Uh, played soccer there and then uh, this wild hair to kind of enhance our business uh, once we moved the restaurant down here was to go to culinary school. Honestly, I enjoyed every bit of it. Um, you know, it's always been a passion of mine. I grew up with my dad and my grandmother, uh, Miss Pearl as well in the old restaurant. So I was always around food and always around this business. Uh, and it was just something that I saw, I, I felt needed to happen um, to kind of uh, elevate us on the catering side and the restaurant side. And, you know, I would say that the, the best thing I've gotten out of it though is, is the relationships that came, came along with it. Some of the instructors that I had uh, at Helms College, um, our kitchen manager here, Kyle Howard, who's been a real asset for us, 
he's been with us since I got out of culinary school. I kind of recruited right. him out of out of the <laughs> class, uh, as well as others who have have come and gone and uh, done some great things. And then you know I think that that ultimately led to I got to go on to the Food Network um, next Food Network star. It's season twelve. Uh, a long time ago, I don't even remember what year it was, um, but that was another cool thing. I was very, still am very passionate about the food, but at that point in time, I was was cooking a lot. I was very involved, and um, that was a, a fun experience along the way. Outside of work, do you have any like go-to recipe or meals for friends and family that you like to make? Oh man, um, you know, I love to be on the grill. I love anything over fire, but honestly, if we're just at mom and dad's house and cooking some steaks and we usually go to some roasted roasted broccoli and carrots <laughs> fairly healthy family but uh love being on the grill um love cooking anything over an open fire well everybody loves his banana pudding cheesecake okay <laughs> uh, and also the uh i, I want to mention something about helms college too is we a number of, of uh, students who've come through helms have come here to work and we've we feel like we've grown them as individuals. Some have moved on. Like, like I said, some are here, still here, but our kitchen manager, one man, he's grown immensely here. Uh, but yeah, so we, we were also helping Helms College grow their education too. Well, that's awesome that you're helping, I guess, all students from your previous institutions. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, and because you guys get to work together as like father and son, do y'all have any like fun or I guess memorable moments that it's like to work together? Oh man, <laughs> every day. You know, you know, people ask us all the time, do you, do you fight? And it's like, well, we, we, you know, we don't have time to. Mm. We're so busy once we hit the door and, and sometimes I'll get home at night and my wife said, did you ask Howard about this? You know, maybe it's a vacation we have coming up. He says, I said, no, I didn't know. We, we were too busy. I didn't, didn't even register that we need to talk about personal stuff, too. We, we're all business when we get here. But, no, we have a great relationship, and, um, and, and, and it's a give and take, and, and uh, I think we complement each other well. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just second that. I mean, I think that we have a relationship that, that works. Uh, been through good times, been through tougher times, but some sort of way we... we uh, seem to mesh well and make a make a good team and yeah probably probably too much business most of the time but we <laughs> we find a way to to make each other re relax somewhere around in there <laughs> well that's good um so i said earlier i didn't have any tough questions but i guess this may be a tough question for you okay for each of your restaurants what's your favorite meal for each of your spots oh man that's that's tough i mean i mean you know, i eat here at Fat Man's, we're in Fat Man's today. I mean, I, I eat here about every day. And <laughs> my, my go-to is I, I create a salad every day with, okay. some, with some protein on it. But uh, if I had to eat here with something off the menu, it probably would be a burger. Okay. Um, Snowcat, probably the same thing, a burger. And then, you know, down at uh, Southern Saddle, if I had to, to pick a, a salad, I, I guess I'll... To, to keep everything peaceful at home, I'd pick the page, which is named after my wife. So <laughs> if I didn't pick that and she heard this podcast, she might get a little angry. So, but yeah, I, and I like to tell people when they walk in to ask me, you know, what's good, and I just say everything. Um, you know, if if I'm here and we eat here every day, I'm usually creating something as well. It's usually some rice, and then I go down the go down the line over here and put put three or four of the sides on top of the rice because I eat pretty light during the day. It's like a, a soul food sundae is what I always call it. I got you, I got you. <laughs> um, southern salad, I do the same thing. I go make a grain bowl, get up some rice, and then go down the line and with some veggies. At Snowcap, I'm up there often with my daughters and I get the steakhouse burger. Mm. It's kind of my, my cheat meal, but it's got a uh, Swiss cheese, uh, onions, mushrooms, and A1 sauce on it. Mm. It's A1. Um, yeah, but it's it's delicious. So, and then some ice cream. <laughs> of course, give me yeah. an Oreo milkshake. Yeah, no cap. So, uh, you guys have been a Jack Perks partner for the university, where anyone in Jack Nation that has a Jack card can come by and get ten percent off. But you also brought a new plate or new meal to the you know, lineup. Can you talk a little bit about our new addition? Go for it, half. Yeah, so we uh, you know, we've got the 
the blue up there at AU, the Jaguars. We got the blue plate special. I don't know if y'all can see that on the camera, but we've got a mac and cheese and collard greens, our signature sides on there, and then a fried catfish uh, with a little piece of cornbread. But we hope hope folks can uh, see this and, and come order it. But also uh, just hope that people take advantage of the JAG Perks program. You know, I think it's a uh, awesome resource for the students, and we hope we start to see more uh, folks come through the door and use that card and you know be able to give that discount and make them aware of all our brands around town and also other businesses around town. So uh, you mentioned how you've been in this location for about 10 years and I guess uh, just to wrap up what would you like to see in the next 10 years for hospitality group overall, for Fat Man's, Bradley's Barbecue? You know <laughs> yeah, you know, we always want to continue to grow, um, but if, if we didn't open another restaurant, we're real happy with, with what we have. And uh, but we do want to be a, a restaurant or in a business that gives back. Uh, that's important to us. And I think you know it comes back to you tenfold when you do give back. Not that we're looking for it to come back, but typically it, it, it does. And uh, and I do want to say too, being an ex basketball player, one of the things we offer to the basketball program is all the pre-game meals for the Jags, they, all the players come in on game day and they eat for free. Oh, wow. And so um, that's been a real treat for us too. We get to know the players. Um, they've, they've brought us a signed basketball that we put uh -huh. up on the counter. So our employees love getting to meet. We know when they're showing up because they're all <laughs> at least six foot three, six foot four. So when they walk in, the guy, the girls go, basketball players are here. <laughs> so anyway, we, we did first time they show up, you don't even know who they are. They just go walk in and get through the door. Some of them have to duck to get through the door. So, mm. but that's the perk. But yeah, we, you know, if it, if we continue to grow, great. If we don't, we're just going to nurture what we have. Yeah, I mean, I I second that. The only thing that I would add is, um, you know, we've we've made. Uh, big investments in the community, community especially uh, downtown Augusta and, and downtown North Augusta. And we're just looking forward to seeing that progress and grow with the progress of, of our city and downtown. And um, yeah, we're just happy and privileged to be a part of it. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna keep, keep doing our thing. Keep plugging. All right, well, thank y'all for letting us come and kind of crash the restaurant yeah, for man. a bit. And yeah, go Jags. Appreciate y'all yeah, coming here. Go you Jags. Are, always welcome here. With the Jag mobile app, you can now discover and filter events that match your interests. Your task for success at AU will be right there in your current tasks. Finish them and they automatically move to the completed task section. But that's not all. With the Jag mobile app, you'll receive targeted push notifications that are relevant to you. No more irrelevant alerts clogging up your phone. Stay in the know without the noise. Jag Mobile's messaging feature lets you see which events they're attending, the groups they're joining, and the conversations they're engaging in. It's the ultimate social and academic networking tool. Well, welcome back, Sarah. Thank to you so much. The podcast. No, it's been a while since we had you on yeah, last. Yeah, last time um, it was just uh, audio, and now we're up to visual. Yes. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> and today we're in Fat Man, so you're all. I want to say festive because that means yeah. it's green. Yeah. Well, you know, Augusta, we have a lot of different green things. We're going into the springtime. Yep. Um, it just felt like the right move. So, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, but for our listeners who are unfamiliar, can you talk a little bit about Destination Augusta and kind of how you became involved with? Okay. Yeah. Well, to get a little technical, so Destination Augusta is an economic driver for the taxpayers of Richmond County, which is the county that Augusta University is in. Um, and we raise that money through tourism, encouraging people to pick Augusta as the destination for their vacation, for their film production, for their meeting and convention, for leisure travel. Um, when their friends and family come, we like to make recommendations so those friends and family go out and spend money. Um, and we just like to turn visitation into more money and we save taxpayers money, uh, up to $800 per household, a little oh, bit wow. more than that. Yeah, like over $800 per household in Richmond County is uh, covered by tourism and it's growing every year. That's cool. How did you, I guess, uh, begin to get involved with your current role? 
I actually tempt there a couple times. I'm the founder of an event, Augusta Handmade Fair, which is coming up on May 4th. Poop poop? Yep. Um, and had some built-in relationships with local makers, people who build stuff with their hands, um, and get hired originally to outfit Augusta and Company, our Augusta Experience Center at 1010 Broad Street. Um, we wanted to fulfill that with a lot of local um, original to Augusta products, and I already had those built-in things. And so from there, I've grown in my role and just, I'm all in on Augusta and all in on tourism. So it's just been so nice. And I've been there six years now. Oh, wow. Yeah. What would you say is the most fulfilling part of your role now? Because I know it keeps you busy. It does keep me busy. Um, I love being able to be nimble and wear hat, different hats from whether I'm talking to a film production about picking Augusta to um, helping to create a brand new experience like a coffee trail um, and the connections that I'm able to make in the community. Even if it doesn't really benefit me personally, it benefits the city I really love. Uh, so since you kind of brought up the coffee trail. Before we get into that, <laughs> could you talk a little bit more about our authentic Augusta experiences because those are something that's still relatively new to the community. Yes, so that is a newer thing that we were taking on is creating these immersive experiences that really uh, make a lifetime memory. So if you come to Augusta and you attend an authentic Augusta experience, say a student goes with their parents or a group of students gets together for like a fun night out um, and they go and then they like have this incredible experience at a museum when normally the museum feels a little bit untouchable or this incredible immersion into the history of Augusta when it can seem a little intimidating. Um, and it just kind of wraps around all your five senses and makes it accessible in a way, you know, um, creates a sense of belonging in the city even if you aren't um, directly from the city. Um, and then you just go out and tell people about it. And so ideally it's just kind of a driver to expose people to authentic Augusta experiences. And could you highlight maybe one or two experiences that you truly think kind of encapsulate just Augusta off the top of your head? Yes, um, we actually have a really robust art scene. Um, and so I'm just gonna focus on that today. I can't pick favorites, um, <laughs> but two of them, one is available indoors and one is available outdoors. And so I'll talk about these arts experiences because the arts can be a little intimidating for people, mm -hmm. right? So um, the Greater Augusta Arts Council has Promenade and Paint where you do an art walk, you see some visual art and sculptures, and then you go by Humana Tree House, which is owned by Broody and Denise Tucker. It is a juice joint, it is a live music venue. Um, and Brady is actually a prolific finger painter and it sounds like, you know, like, oh, I can finger paint. No, no, like his hands are all little paint brushes and he oh, does wow. this amazing stuff. And so you can use your fingers or a paintbrush and you actually get to paint a public mural that will be hung like you, it's kind of a, um, a group canvas. And after it's done, it'll be hung somewhere in Augusta. And so then you become an Augusta public artist. And so that's a way for anyone um, based on their love of art to um, access it. And then Westaboo Gallery, which is a free gallery that's open Monday through Saturday, um, they do something called a curated palette. And that is where you go in and you take in the artwork and then afterwards you learn about the smells, the sights, the sounds, the colors and the textures, and then you build a charcuterie board oh, nice. based on your experience. Everything from the colors to like this, you know, this felt like a little sour to me, so that's why I picked these gherkin pickles. I don't know if you say gherkin pickles, but whatever. <laughs> um, and so you, you make this, and so our art level really loves the time to like look at the art, and the other person gets really excited about eating the snacks afterwards. Um, that was kind of my thing. So my husband and I really enjoyed that one. Um, and then they do really cute things like over the winter, they did a charcuterie chalet <laughs> and did like a little um, house and then did a charcuterie oh, on top wow. of it. And so they're always getting creative. And so it's promenade and paint, like the different murals and stuff. And all of the authentic guest experiences really try to shape your experience with Gusta. But those are two good examples. And right now we currently have 10 yes. experiences. What was the, I guess, recruitment process like in finding mm -hmm. what experiences we want to bring to yeah. Authentic Augusta? Yeah, well, it can get a little bit technical, um, so 
cut out what you need to. Um, but essentially, it is actually funded by tourism grant money. Um, part of the hotel motel tax that's paid is actually given to us to administer on behalf of the city to different things to help it get going. And so eight of the 10 authentic guest experiences are considered cultural attractions. They're a nonprofit organization that is a recipient of grant money specifically to develop that experience and to run it. There are many things that that grant money does to fund it. And then we also were lucky enough to find um, Bike Bike Baby in all equal parts to people. And there are a lot of people like this, like these small business entrepreneurs that are putting their heart and soul and their own funds into their businesses. And so we were able to kind of roll them in and include them in the process somewhat, which has been really exciting. Um, but essentially it was um, an opt-in, like anyone who wanted to put in the work, it was a huge commitment. And I just have to toot the horn of the Authentic Guest <laughs> partners. They are like professional experience builders now. Um, they just really did some incredible work and it was fun to be a part of it. Well, for me, just to kind of be behind the scenes of seeing some of that stuff come together, it was really interesting to see some of the experiences. Cause I will say it's uh, very, broad list that we got so regardless of if you love being indoors or outdoors mm -hmm. or if you're artistic or if you just love food like there's plenty of stuff to kind of keep you keep you going I guess yeah yeah you can get in the swamp and get some bugs or you can have some pie with some <laughs> ladies from the late 1800s you know it's it's a definitely a variety <laughs> and what has the community response been like so far for yeah, it, it takes time, as you may know, um, to get the word out. Uh, and so they're definitely growing slowly. Several of them are booking more regularly. I think one of the biggest successful stories for us is Augusta's Black Caddies. Oh, um, yeah. The Laney Museum has just really knocked that out of the park with some actors portraying the um, caddies that worked at the Augusta National from the 30s to 80s. Um, and just several sold out crowds. Um, getting, we just had a convention in town, and the convention booked them to come and do the performance for their convention attendees. Um, and it's really been cool. neat to see them travel. And um, and we actually were able to feature that one with AU Orientation last year. So. Oh, really? Yeah, so that's been just a fun experience, like getting them all to dive into the community. It, anything with economic development is such a long game, you know? Mm -hmm. It just is like, okay, it's ready, and then we just keep trying. <laughs> but they've been going really well. That's great to hear. Uh, but switching gears a little bit back to the coffee trail. Can yes. you explain what the coffee trail is and how everybody can st start trailing on, I guess? Yes. Yeah. So this one is really neat. It's, ge it's geo-based from your smartphone. So you do have to allow your location services. I know that's a touch point for someone, but um, it's really worth it um, because you can visit all of the participants in the Augusta Coffee Trail. There are 11 locations from eight businesses that originated here in Augusta and do either their own roasted coffee or just their own way of presenting it, an original menu. You can only find it here in our city. Um, and you actually just check in on your phone. There's no, no purchase required. We'd love for you to patronize these places. And actually two of the people on the coffee trail at this time, we're adding people all the time, are um, offering a discount with your Jag Perks ID when you do purchase something um, with your student ID for Jag Perks. Uh, but, um, you go through and as you visit a couple of stops, you earn a little star icon Augusta sticker. And then after five to six stops, you earn an I Love Augusta coffee mug. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, yes, we want you to see all of these different spots and experience those, but it's just a little bit lower of a buy-in. There's no ticket. You just kind of sign up and um, go through the process of the digital passport. So where do we go to, I guess, download the app and get started? Yeah, well, there. It, the great news is it's not an app. You okay. don't even have to download it to your phone. Isn't that great? I'm, I was telling you before we started, <laughs> I wasn't adding any more apps to my life. Um, but if you check, if you search coffee trail at visitaugusta.com, and then I'm hoping we can put something here uh, that um, points people to the page for it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, what has been one of your favorite stops on the coffee trail so far? Oh, goodness. It's so hard to pick favorites because there's different ones. Um, I actually, we just, um, we've been doing different reels, the Love Augusta guys that mm -hmm. people might be really familiar with really helped put us those together. And we just did the Bodega Ultima reel this week. 
Um, and there is something about having a latte at this time of year out on their patio. And the, um, one of the local celebrity dogs, Ash, the Bodega Ultima dog, is Aww. out there. Yeah, um, and it's just, it's got a fountain and it's covered. You run into people you know. So um, I think I'd go Bodega Ultima today. Okay. But tomorrow it'll be somebody else. I got you. That, and that's fine because, I mean, when it comes to favorites with Augusta, like, there's always so many options. Yeah, so you can't, you can't it narrow it down. Um, and I guess how do you see the coffee trail growing over the next couple of months or a year? Mm -hmm. It'll be an evergreen pass, which means you can access it at any time because people love coffee all the time. And we'll do different iterations of it. Like as it begins to get warmer, we'll probably do some kind of iced coffee trail. And then toward the fall, there's actually like an international coffee day and we'll do something else, maybe pumpkin spice latte or what's your favorite fall beverage. And so we'll continue to do that. And then we're also developing some new trails, one based on the outdoors. And then one I'm really excited about is a lot of bigger cities have um, an experience pass, like the city pass, trademark, um, where you can um, buy a group of tickets to different things and receive a discount and we'll oh. be we'll be launching that in time for christmas shopping that'll be fun yes so i'm really excited and that one will be a focus on our owner operator entrepreneurs they have a pri higher price point for their experience because it's incredible um but they weren't able to participate in authentic augusta and so this is a way to kind of get them involved in the way we're able to get the word out yeah and it's so funny because all of our partners if you're wondering like what their cost is to participate in this stuff we're not invoicing anybody we're just out here doing this I love that because yeah. that kind of really, like you mentioned earlier, like kind of incentivizes everyone to get involved in some way, shape, or fashion. Yeah, I know AU really wants to create a sense of belonging, and I mean, that's what we're doing with y'all, um, just through different ways of collaborating. But also, um, that's what we want in Augusta and even Augusta's River region, the surrounding areas. We want to work together to make Augusta a better place for locals because then it's better for students, for visitors, for anyone. Are there any other trails that you can kind of tease that are on the horizon? Yeah, so we'll be uh, relaunching a digital version of the James Brown Journey Trail. It's something that we've done previously but didn't have the technology for the geo tracking. Um, and what you'll be able to do is go to several different stops of, from the boyhood home of James Brown, which is now just kind of a biker bar, um, to you know James Brown Arena, the Imperial Theater where he performed, the Augusta Museum of History, where um, he has his um, whole collection of stuff that the family has donated on his behalf. And you're able to listen to audio recordings of friends and family, um, some who've, um, who we lost since they recorded it, like Don Rhodes, the journalist who was a good friend of James Brown. Um, and it's like audio of those friends and family uh, sharing about their life with him. So it's kind of just a really neat thing. And it's all outdoors, so it's open 24 seven. Um, and on your stops, you can win a James Brown Arena sticker um, by completing a couple stops and then a really neat shot glass, which even if you're not a drinker, you just put a little OJ in there. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, about keeping downtown funky in its little soul bar shot glass, which was one of the places James Brown frequented. So we're really excited about that. We'll be launching that uh, probably just after Masters. So for those that, you know, participate in all of these trails, do they go back to the Experience Center to kind of claim their yeah, prizes? Yeah, for prize pickup, you'll go back by our Augusta and Company, our Experience Center. Um, it's great because while you're there, you can learn about your next great thing to do, whether it's a trail that we've built or something that is just organic in the city, including, you know, um, I love seafood. What's a great seafood option? Um, and you stop in that, and we always say, we do have Augusta items for sale, but the information's always free. Mm, I like that. Yeah. So speaking of Augusta and Company, part of, I guess, that experience that you have Augusta experts that help, uh, I guess, let people know where to go, what to do, and all that fun stuff. So I have a fun game for you. Okay. To kind of test your <laughs> Augusta expertise. Uh-oh. Um, so it's a, just a name game that I'm calling Sarah Selections because I'm going to read out some statements. And I just want you to... <laughs> Just give me your selection of what to do for, okay. for this scenario. So I'll do my best. You're going to do great. So first up, uh, what would you select for the Augusta University student and family members who are only visiting for 24 hours? That's so tricky. I'm going to assume that it's a warmer time of year because okay. I know the biggest time that parents are in town is the spring, summer, and fall, and not usually in the winter. So, so you can go outside, right? 
All right, well, you've got to um, hit up one of our outdoor experiences, whether it be Bike Bike Baby, you get on the bike ride because they take you to the brunch house, they take you to Second City Distillery for the parents. Um, <laughs> and you stop by there um, and just really get into our downtown footprint. Um, it is a really great place to experience and you just run into stuff that you're interested in. Um, it can get really tricky because so much of it is based on interest, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I was like, you've got to go to Grant Ski Records. It's this great big record store downtown. And then somebody's like, oh, I don't like albums. And I'm like, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> but um, Bike Bike Baby is pretty great. Okay. I enjoy them. Uh, next up for the Augusta newbie who loves the outdoors. Yes. I would get out on our water. There are so many ways to do that. And we do have the information compiled in Augusta and Company and on our website, visitaugusta.com. And I know Matt and his team at the Rec Center also have a lot of that information and are wildly helpful. So I'd actually recommend the students check in with him first mm. and then come, um, if they need additional route information, come see us at Augusta and Company. But I love to paddleboard on the Augusta Canal. I haven't been paddleboarding yet. I've been kayaking, but... It's fun. The first t couple times you do it, your feet get real sore because you're stabilizing, but I like it. it um, it's a little bit of a slower pace, and I just take my Bluetooth speaker, waterproof, um, <laughs> and just listen to music yeah. and paddle around, up current first, and then down back. current back, because okay. otherwise you're in That's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> um, next up, and you kind of already mentioned this before, but someone that admires the Augusta Arts... Yes, um, there's actually a really neat new gallery, Candle Gallery, and the reason it's called that is it's right next to Augusta Candle Company, which oh, is a nice. cool experience where you make your own candle, where they opened a gallery, and it's also free where you can go and they do different iterations um, and shows. So I really enjoy um, going by there, uh, but I think one of the really nice things is we have several different galleries and collectives, and so really just being plugged into what's going on on our website and also what the Arts Council is up to um, is a really helpful first step in figuring that out. Next up, for a couple that would like to try or learn something new. A couple that would like to learn something new. They have um, a lot of people maybe too young to know the ghost reference, and it's not as spicy <laughs> as on Ghost, but Tire City Pottery actually has some pottery classes um, and different things, and I had a couple that went recently, and they had a really great time okay. just throwing some pottery together. Um, so that is a recommendation that I would do. And then um, another thing that a couple could do is just catch a show at the Miller. It's really beautiful, and they have all different kinds of music and comedy um, and live performances, so there's something there for everyone. Next up, someone who wants to deep dive in the city culture for an evening. For one evening? That's a good one. We'll cut out this for time, or we'll play the Jeopardy music. <laughs> um, I didn't mean to stump you. No, it's a good one. Like, if you just want to get plugged into... I mean, I think that that's really tricky because Augusta is so neat and has so many different subsets. Like, I just learned that there's, like, a very serious hardcore music community here. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's some really great uh, music promoters, uh, some great events, like, based on interests. I think it's really hard to pin down, like, we are funky, we are gritty, we are soulful. And I don't think there's anything that encapsulates how... Um, how beautiful Augusta is it like just really being a mesh of all of those different kinds of cultures and interests so I don't have one I think Arts in the Heart might be a Ooh, close okay. touch yeah. point because they have the International Village and a lot of different things and everyone comes out for that there's like almost a hundred thousand people in downtown Augusta at that point so I guess that's the closest we can get and last one which this might be an easier one uh, for someone that loves golf yeah well, you can't get onto the Augusta National without a ticket, so that's the trick, isn't it? I believe, is it Forest Hills that Augusta University has a relationship with? So mm -hmm. you can get on at Forest Hills. If you want to volunteer, you can get involved with First Tee, which is exposing um, underprivileged youth to the golf experience and providing an opportunity for them to kind of participate in what is a bit of an expensive sport. I've never been a golf person. We have Top Golf, which is a really great um, way to just uh, hit some balls. I'm very bad at it. Just so bad. <laughs> just so bad. Um, but 
it, it's our hope for someday there to be a more immersive golf experience. It's on my wish list. Well, thank you for all your selections. I thought you did pretty well. Thanks. Um, so for everyone watching, y'all have plenty of options based off of Sarah's selections. Oh, and we didn't even scratch the surface. I was saying that was just a few, <laughs> that was just a few minutes of time of where we're just like <laughs> spitting off stuff. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts before I let you go about Coffee Trail, Experience Augusta? I think we're always doing something new. We're always trying to connect people. Um, and as much as we want to connect people in our store to local experiences, we're here to talk with new entrepreneurs creating experiences. We want to support those. Um, we can all use more walking tours and some kind of mobile tour. So I always pitch that like, hey, business ideal will help will help sell the tickets. So <laughs> we just want Augusta to be as accessible to as many people as possible. and. It's a joy to be part of that journey. Well, thank you, Sarah, for being here. Yeah. You got me all excited to experience some more stuff. I know, let's go. Of, yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm counting down today's to graduation so I can get my life back and be back out. <laughs> it's time for me to go out. You, you have really done a big deal. <laughs> Look at you. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed that episode. And if you really enjoyed it, please let us know. So like, subscribe, all those things on our YouTube channel as well on the audio platforms, Apple and Spotify, and talk to us on our Instagram, In The Wild Pod. But I really hope you spend some time outside of campus enjoying Augusta, whether it's at Fat Man's or the Coffee Trail or any of the authentic Augusta experiences that we talked about. There's so much for you to do this spring. The weather's nice. It's about to get hot out here, y'all. So please go out, enjoy the Augusta weather while you can, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.